Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to Life to Life Ministries Prophetic Roundtable. Round yes, <laughs> yes, yes. In the past, you probably have seen the prophet's voice and have wondered where the prophet's voice had gone. It had went into a, uh, an incubus stage, if you will, to where the development of it can be stronger, in which now we have the prophetic round table. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Now, you're wondering, what is the round table? The round table, we're going to have prophets. We have two wonderful prophets with us today, and we will have various prophets here to discuss the relevant things that are, current, are occurring, because we have to move from the traditional approach of religion. If we're not walking in what the Lord has said that he builds his ministries on the backs of the apostles and prophets, and prophets. Now, we've had apostles for years, but we need to recognize, he said, and prophets. So it needed to be a one-two punch. So we're bringing that left hook back in to the ministry with the prophetic voice at the prophetic roundtable. We have various individuals talking about what's relevant uh, what's going on here today because it's so necessary. We've moved from a traditional approach of ministry and unfortunately the morality and ethics of society that would normally govern the direction of families have been eroded away. And the enemy said, I am out the closet right now and it is what it is. So we as Christians, we can't remain passive. We have to be confident in who the Lord is and exercise the authority that he given us. And whom he have called us to be. Yes, yes, he yes. He wants us to be confident yes. in whom he's called us to be. Yes. And walk out in it. Yes, he doesn't want us cowering in corners saying, watch out for this. You know, he wants us to say, hey, I'm the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm God. Mm -hmm. And this is who I am. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce my, my wonderful wife, um, Prophetess Angela Cook. And we have with us today... The one, um, the only. Prophet <laughs> is Shanda Horton. Woo! And so I'm going to step off this stage. You may hear our voice, mm -hmm. me and Pastor Brian in the background. We may have some questions, and we throw at the prophets, but I believe with everything inside of us, they're ready, and you're going to get something out of this. Just because you tuned in, it wasn't a coincidence. God stirred you. You're up. Amen. You're watching. You Amen. want to know it. If you pull on his spirit, I promise you, there is a voice yeah. that speaks because this is what they do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be unto God. Amen. So I'm going to welcome Prophetess Christina Hall. I'd like to say while she's coming up that it does my heart just great pleasure to be sitting here with Prophetess Christina Horton. Uh, many of you are familiar with Prophetess Christina. Um, she's a, an awesome woman of God of whom the Lord has has um, really sculpted and tailored for such a time as this. And um, I know some strong prophets, but and, and, and this is one of whom I've had an opportunity to see the Lord just take and mold and just use her so mightily for the for the strengthening of the kingdom. So thank you, Prophetess Christina, for being here. Yes, yes, and all the glory goes to God Amen. for what he's doing in this season. Amen. So it's an exciting time, Amen. and it's a time like no other according to Holy Spirit is yes. what it is and we're going to get ready to see a mighty move of God in Sanford. Yes. Sanford is where it's going to start mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So get ready. Mm -hmm. Get mm -hmm. ready. I like that. Get ready. Yes. You know I was I was talking with other prophets on um, this past Friday and I was telling the prophets I said you know it's an exciting time and it's a nervous time for some. Mm -hmm. And like never before, Prophet is, and I'd like to hear what you have to say, like never before, God is saying, he's saying through the mouth of the prophets, there's a shofar even blowing, a trumpet blowing that is saying, you're either on my side or the enemy's side. Yeah. And choose this day whom you're going to serve. And I, I was reminded, I saw the Noah in Noah's ark. And how, um, you know, he was proclaiming and saying that the flood, the rains are coming. Yes. And I believe that we've heard the prophet say, he's coming. Get ready. Get your house in order. Yes. And come on in. 
as the Lord is leading many hearts to do so. Yeah. It's been a few weeks ago that I heard Holy Spirit say, warn the leaders. And when he said, warn the leaders, when he spoke to me, he says, I've made you a prophet for the leaders. Yeah. And I remember telling him, but they're not going to listen to me. And when he sent me, one told me, you're just a baby. So you haven't been in ministry longer than me. So Holy Spirit would never have sent that word through you. And an elder told me, you go back and tell them that when a woman has a baby and everybody comes over for the shower, if the baby's there, the baby gets all the attention. And he told me, don't worry, they're going to listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's within my gift that they're going to listen. It's not me, it's Holy Spirit through me. I'm just the vessel. But he said, you go and you warn the leaders mm -hmm. and you tell them that I've given them specific instructions to follow. And it's almost like it's one thing to be a prophet and to give someone a good word, but it's another thing to be a prophet and have to send the warning. Mm. But his voice through Holy Spirit was so stern. You tell them. And then he showed me, for those that don't listen, what's going to happen. Mm. He says we're going to see leaders as they enter the pulpit as they're preaching in the pulpit and as they're leaving the pulpit, we're going to see them drop dead. Mm. These are going to be leaders that normally we see as healthy. So to our knowledge, nothing medical wrong with them. Jesus. And when their families go to get autopsies, it's going to be inconclusive. Jesus. And Holy Spirit said, that's how you're going to know it's me. Now, why is it going to happen to those leaders in those three incidents? He said, because there are some leaders in the churches today that I've said um, are operating in sin. Yeah. But it's a sin that is a repeated sin for them. Yes. And that it no longer brings conviction for them. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to sin and it brings conviction and you repent yeah. and get on the path again. Yes. Yes. But it is another thing to come into the pulpit repeatedly every Sunday with the intent and have no conviction and don't repent. And he said enough is enough. And so that's why this season is going to be like a cleaning up. Yeah. Because there's a movement that's going to take place. And only leaders who are in the right place through Holy Spirit with God are going to be able to lead the people. They've got to be after his heart. Yeah. And in this season, we're going to see leaders test it by their belief but he said how are we going to know they're true leaders because they're going to follow the sound of my voice they're going to know my voice I'm going to ask them to do some things that they as leaders would think this isn't God yeah. but I'm going to test them and they must pass the test mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so prophetess it sounds like you have had to go maybe possibly to some, but what's the reaction? What's the reaction? Because the pro a, a hardened word such as get your house in order yes. or this is a warning. Um, you know, in biblical times, it was um, the people got nervous when a prophet would come. Yes. Say, is the news good? Did you come with good news? Yes. Is it good news? Or, you know, away with the prophet, you know, because the prophet's voice is very strong because it's the Lord's yes. voice is his instruction. So um, have you seen where there has been, yes, a repentance and a turning around? I have seen many things, I would say. I've seen those that are fearful yeah. um, when I come and then I have those that are eager. Yeah. I want to see. I want to know what it is, yeah. regardless yeah. of what it is. And yeah. you do have those that are fearful. And I'll tell you that it was new for me to get a hard word to give someone. Yeah. So even in myself, watching Holy Spirit say, no, i got to take you here mm. if you want to be a part. Mm -hmm. Just listen to what I tell you and say it. And then to get specific instructions as to when to say it, I think is critical as a prophet um, because sometimes Holy Spirit will give me something that I have to hold it for months mm -hmm. and then he goes now release it mm -hmm. and in the perfect time he brings it all back to my remembrance mm -hmm. so I'm learning as I'm growing 
Um, so I'm used to the edifying word, the yeah. building up word, yeah. the good word. Yeah. And now when he says, I want you to go here and see this leader, do I get nervous? Yeah. I do. Yeah. But I also know that to be disobedient to Holy Spirit yeah. is a sin. I, I've done that, and I never want to go back to that feeling. Yeah. And I'm fortunate because that brought about a repentance for me. Mm -hmm. um, so immediate repentance. So it's not that I'm perfect, yeah. that he would send me to give the word. It's just I'm willing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm <laughs> after his own heart. Yes. And so it doesn't mean I won't make mistakes, but I know the order. Yes. God, yes. I made a mistake. Yes. I repent. I'm sorry. Yes. And my goal is to never make that same mistake again, yes. you know, yes. like our children. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be some of us that don't mind us coming and telling them, but then there are going to be some that don't receive. Mm -hmm. But what I found is when you're walking in what God has anointed you to, so when you're walking in your call, yeah. sometimes you won't see the result immediately, mm -hmm. but you see it mm -hmm. eventually. Like you said, being a willing and yielded vessel, and that's what God is requiring, yes. a yielded vessel, one who is willing to go through the process, because as we know, there are prophets. Prophets go through a rigorous processing, and um, whereas it's, it's, it's not always easy, but you can we can understand why the Lord would put us through such um, breaking and tailoring because we're carrying his word. Yes. We're carrying his word and we have to grow in uh, a wisdom, like you said, when to give it, when not to give it, when to hold on to it yes. and say it like he said it. Yes. And there are some hardened places where we have to, um, case in point, as a prophet and a prophetic roundtable, even um, in this time, as the Lord is doing a dividing of those who will stand upright and righteous and speak forth and be truthful for what he is doing and for what he is saying versus the ones who are prophesying with strange fire um, and how he is, um, th there's a strong caution right there. But as prophets, we contend for the faith of God. We contend for his word. And if it's not his word, then we stand and we say, that's not God. And that's what he's expecting. And this time, because we're not going back to a, a patty cake type of a, of a, of a body of Christ. Yes. He's very sincere. The enemy is very busy, and God wants souls. Yes. He wants the souls. And how he's how is he going to get the souls? He's going to get the souls from the instruments and from those of us who are willing to have him to strip us yes. and to break us and to mold us and to fill us and now stand and speak truth. Yes. And it's the truth that's going to set a people free. No more lies and no more deception. Yes. God is yes. tired of that. And so there'll be many of us, we'll stand in the face of the enemy, but praise God, he's always with us. Yes. Praise God. I felt the sword come out even yesterday as I was hearing that once saved, always saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. And there's a word of God that stands and backs that up. You cannot say I'm saved and I'm living for Jesus, but then live like the devil and expect to go on to heaven anyhow. It's not going to work. And so I praise God for the prophets. I praise God for the prophetic because in the prophetic, it's the movement. It's the, it's the word of God that gets his yes. people in alignment. Yes. And you yes. go ahead, prophets. You, you said something that Holy Spirit said is absolutely correct. There is going to be a cleaning up. Come on. Mm -hmm. It really is. And and it's going to start, um, what I saw was like a tsunami, but it's going to start from the east to the west. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be a cleaning up. And we're going back to like the Great Awakening. Come on. That word that started where they traveled. If you think back in those times, the amount of land acreage oh that God. they covered. And for him to say what's going to take place now and start on the East Coast yeah. is going to be even greater yeah. than that. If you want to be a part of that, there has to be a cleaning up. Yeah. Because Holy Spirit said, I'm no longer going to accept the things that I used to accept. Come on. There's going to be something different. Uh, what I sure. saw as a result of leaders standing up and taking their true place in the ministry. 
not pleasing the members, but listening to Holy Spirit. One of the things that the leaders have to get away from is that if God said go and lead them here, then you go and you lead them there. As a result of the leaders doing what Holy Spirit has told them to do, you're going to see some things. And there are going to be things we can see with our eyes. When those leaders are doing that, what I saw was going to happen is they're going to have a church. Even those that open immediately, we're going to see the church almost instantly heal. Wow. Amen. Why? Wow. Because for some of them, some of those other leaders that they've been following after that Holy Spirit said, some of the followers know, but there are some that yeah. are blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that hurts Holy Spirit. That hurts God to know that they got over here and got behind this. So he's going to clean that out. Amen. When that gets cleaned out, Amen. these people, these sheep, as I saw, have to have a place yes. to go. Yes. A place that's after God's heart. Yes. Those churches that are after his true heart, that are on the path, that is why you're going to see them feel almost instantly. Jesus. There were some churches that were huge. There's still people waiting outside. There were some churches I saw had three and four services in a Sunday, and yet at every service there were people waiting outside. Oh that is what you're going to see as the movement begins to take place, where people say, I want to go somewhere that's effective. I also saw in those churches they won't speak healing and deliverance. They will. They won't. They won't. So when someone gets sick, you'll go on a prayer list. Mm -hmm. But there will be no laying on the hands of you or anointing your head with oil. Why? Because those leaders that aren't on the right path know it. So I can't lay hands on you and say that you can be healed, which is biblical, mm -hmm. and you not be healed. Mm -hmm. What is that showing for? Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, this is what I mean. If you're going somewhere where a leader is filled with Holy Spirit, yeah. on the path that God has anointed them to be on, if you come up for prayer and they don't even have to lay hands on you by Holy Spirit, what he showed me. But in this instance, you come up for prayer, we lay hands on you. There is a part that the person needs to have faith that they're healed. Mm -hmm. But us as leaders should already know you're healed. Amen. Now, we'll be able to tell if you lack faith. Mm -hmm. Now, I can lay my hands on you and know that Holy Spirit said you're going to be healed. But you must also believe you're going to be healed. So when you leave a place and they've done that, you can't go out and say how I still feel. Oh, yeah. you got to walk in what yeah, Holy Spirit just gave you yeah. from the person that laid hands on yeah. you. So it's kind of two part, but the leader should know, I know what God showed me. You shall be healed. Mm -hmm. When the leaders are in place, you're going to see them not even have to lay hands Amen. on the people. Mm -hmm. God says we shall have what we speak we shall have, Amen. right? Yeah. So if I'm a leader oh and I speak out of my mouth, especially as a prophet because that's our gift in yeah. area, yeah. If I speak that you're healed, if yes. you send a word for me to pray for you, and I pray for you, Holy Spirit said, in this new season, you're going to be healed without me having to touch you. Now, am I saying laying on of hands and anointing is still not necessary? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you can't get to a place where a true leader is, they're going to yeah. be able to speak it in the atmosphere, yeah. and yeah. you still yeah. be healed. Come on. Yeah. First, now the traditions are still going to be there. Okay. But that's going to be new in this season. When you can go to a place and someone pray for you yeah. and you be healed without coming, yeah. that's a part of this movement. Absolutely. That's a part of Absolutely. this movement. There it is right there. Yes. You know, prophets, we actually witnessed that. We witnessed it um, at Esther's Gala. And um, some of you are familiar with that. But we witnessed at, at Esther's Gala, Holy Spirit, the Lord had given me a vision, but he did not want any of us to touch any woman, to lay hands on any woman, to yes. pray for any woman. Yes. And we didn't. Yes. Prophets, we, we, we did not. Yes. Um, there was um, there was a moment there where it's like, oh, I, I, I wanted, but he said, no. Yes. And I did not. Yes. And prophetess, 
about the next day or two days after that, I started getting calls. Yeah. And they were saying, I believe God, because they all came to yes. the altar and they all laid before the Lord. Yes. Yes. The Lord, not Prophet is Angela. Yeah. Let's get ourselves out the yes. way. Let's just be obedient to yes. what he says. Yes. But they laid before the Lord and he did it. Yes. I've had I've heard people say, you know, I once could not sleep, now I can. You know, I was believing God for a miracle for this situation of a healing. Yes. And he did it the very next day. Yes. It was those things. Yes. And like you said, um, that that there yes. with the shifting that has taken place, we're going to see the supernatural move of God. Yes. Well, all He will need us to do is just be carriers of His presence. Yes. Go to where I tell you to go and let me do it. You just yes. get out the way. Yes, that's you know? it. That's you it. just get out the way. That's it. And you said another key thing that Holy Spirit is going to do in that season. Quick. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Quick. Yeah. You're going to put a prayer request before me in this season, and I'm going to answer just Jesus. That's what he's going to do because he needs people to know. I'm God. I'm God. I am the one and only God. God. No one else could do that I like God. that. Yeah. Yeah. To change a situation like that. A prayer request go up and it be done. Yes. yes. And to know that. Yes. And he says, all you have to do is know my voice. Mm -hmm. He will never lead you astray. And I'm learning to, as I'm growing in my gift, I'm learning that when Holy Spirit tells me things, I test them. Uh -huh. You know, so we were at a BPN meeting, and he put forth, if you ask for the request and they meet what you've asked them to do, then I'm there. Mm -hmm. So did I feel like that word was specifically for me at the time it went forward? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. But when I faced a situation where I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. And he said, yes, you do. And he said, what was the word? And I said, the word was, if you put forth a request and they meet your demands, then I'm there. I put forth a request. They met my demands. Mm -hmm. So I knew Holy Spirit was there. Mm -hmm. So there's always something. Jesus. Was it for me that day? I don't believe so. But he said, go back to that word. Yeah. What was spoken? I said, you said this. He said, try it. So I put forth a demand. They met it. God is there. Amen. That simple. Spoken two weeks before Amen. the situation occurred for me. So he always, if you will listen to his voice and know his voice, You'll never be faced with a decision where you have to go. You're at that stop sign and cars are behind you and you've got to move not knowing which way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really, Holy Spirit shows us in advance. When we're at situations like that, he had already spoken the word two weeks prior. And there I was and he said, go back to my spoken word to you. Mm -hmm. And I went back to that piece of paper where I had written that word and there was the answer. So... He tells us before we get there. Mm -hmm. He will show us what we're going to be up against. Yes. Now, in this new season, we're going to see the leaders tested. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember when I spoke on the prophet's voice mm -hmm. about seeing a foundation with four men. At the time, I didn't mm -hmm. know they were strong men. Mm -hmm. But four strong men on a side. But they weren't good men. And the foundation was created by God. So what I saw is they'll attempt to crack or destroy the foundation. Because the foundation is the most critical part when we're building. If your foundation won't stand, nothing you build will stand. Yeah, so what I saw is in this season, those four men that I saw, when they couldn't break the foundation, they huddled away like a team. Yeah. They went into a huddle and they came up with a new plan. While they're away from the foundation, things are good for you. Mm -hmm. Things seem easy, but they're coming back. Yeah. Yeah. In this season, he says, I got to have true leaders mm -hmm. that when it's time to fight, they won't give up. Yeah. So they must pass the test on their own, mm -hmm. which is why they passed this initial test. They huddle up, but they're coming back. Yeah, yeah. 
But every time they come back and you pass the test and you're preparing yourself for the next level because we're not all going to stay in the same spot. We all got to grow to the next level. Sounds like it's kind of like strength training. Yes. <laughs> like strength training. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, we have a question. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we get excited. Hallelujah. I, you know, this has been so good up thus far. But I, I wanted to back up just a little bit to the spirit being, I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing, inside of the um, churches and individuals walking into the spirit and be healed. Um, how important is it for them to speak the correct words? And not, let, me, let me make sure I say it correctly. That when you receive your healing, you don't negate the healing walking out the door by saying, you know, um, I still don't feel good or, yeah, yeah. you know, where where it, it may have seemed to have been inspiration at the altar, mm -hmm. yet a real healing took place. Yes. And the enemy was waiting at the door yes. to throw those words back. So how important is it <laughs> of us to monitor the words that we say? Because there is a different shift. Yes. There is a different dispensation. Yes. And if we're operating by the spirit, then yes. we have to know the words that we say. Yes. Can you mash on that just a little bit? That is where the training of the leaders is going to come in. Mm -hmm. Because as leaders, we got to train the members that when I pray for you and speak this on you, don't leave out of here and say reverse of what God just gave us. Right. So the teaching starts with the head. The, as the leaders, we're going to have to teach the members that when I lay hands on you, don't take away from what God just gave you when you walk out the door. Now we know the naysayers are going to be there because some of them will be in our churches and they'll meet you at the door and say you did not receive healing there. Regardless of where you are in the things of the Lord, you've got to be able to look at them and say, but I did. That's right. I believe that I did. Yeah. And I believe it's going to manifest. Yeah. If it hasn't already manifested, I believe it. And there's nothing you can say to me that will take that from me. So in this new season, the members are going to have a lot of faith. Amen. When the, the, when the leader's cup is overflowing, any member that sits under them, cup has to overflow yeah. too. Amen. Because where does the overflow go to? Your cup overflows, it goes to me. Mm -hmm. My cup is overflowing. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not a leader mm -hmm. in the church, if I sit under you, yeah. if your cup is overflowing, yes. my cup is full. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're, you may be growing in the leader part of the church, but mm -hmm. I'm if I'm a member, I'm mm -hmm. growing in the things of a member mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. So faith, mm -hmm. healing, mm -hmm. believing, yeah. whatever you're feeding them, they're taking it in. Amen. So that's why there's going to be a sweeping of what are they feeding yeah. my people. Amen. Amen. And the enemy, what he wants, he wants our words. And he... I was asking, they can can the enemy can he read our thoughts? No, he cannot. Mm -hmm. But he watches, mm -hmm. and he watches your reactions, your responses, and your movements, and he listens for what you yes. say. And so, if you're thinking, there's a scripture in the Bible that that says, um, if you're thinking the wrong thoughts, cover your mouth. Just don't speak yes. what um, maybe you've heard others say or um, because you can negate mm. that of which you have received. Yes. You've received it, but your mouth, you've, it just killed that. It just negated that of which you had just gotten. So even if you don't, quote unquote, feel it. It's, it happens spiritually. You believe what the Lord has done. It's rightfully yours as yes. believers. Yes. It's part of our packet. Yes. Uh, amen. It comes with salvation. Yes. And it, but it comes when, whenever one, our bodies can be attacked. And our soulless realm can be attacked. But who we really are, we are healed. Because the Bible said so. But to come into agreement with the enemy because you're speaking contrary yes. to what the word is saying, you can have just what you say. Absolutely. <laughs> the Bible it. says you can have That's what it. you say. Yes. Yes. And then he goes even further and yes. says, as a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is he. Yes. And so if we are hearing, I'm not healed, I'm not healed, yes. I still feel it, it's still there, it's still there. And then it gets into our hearts and it's there. Well, so are you. So are you. Yes. 
And then everything around you, not only that, but I'm going to take us to a place here where some of you may stretch your hand, but just stay with me. So if you believe that you're not healed, and the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, then that means then you're not healed. So therefore, your very being is filled with the belief that you're not. And so if your very being is filled with that, your spirit is filled with that, then everywhere you go, you will, uh, you will hear the very same words that you are emitting from your spirit. Your spirit is believing and you, you are in the state of, I'm not healed. So therefore, those of whom you are around, they will believe then and say the same thing because you you are who that is, not healed. So why is it that you feel like, and some people feel like, I always meet the same people over and over and over and over and over. You're going to always meet the same people because they, you attract the same thing as you are. So if you don't like what you're getting, then change your thoughts, change your speech, change your environment, change it. Even if you don't feel it, you don't, you've never seen it before. But if Jesus said it's rightfully yours, then Simply believe and get your own reasonings and understandings out of the way and simply believe. I have been believing God for a healing. Yes. And, you know, it is so. Yes, it's so. Uh, it is so. It is so. It is so. Yes. I don't care what I've seen. I don't care what I have felt. It is so. Yes. Do those thoughts, do I get winds every now and then yes. that says, no, absolutely, but I won't speak it. Yes. Because the enemy wants me to speak it. Because yes. if I speak it, it is so. Yes. The devil is yes. alive. Let's watch our mouths. Yes, that's right. Watch our mouths. That's right. A new season. It's a new season. A new season. So we know that in the new season, we're going to see the churches be filled to capacity. Amen. I saw in a vision where a church was established, and I said, it's too small because I saw the people out. And I said, what do I tell them? He says, don't tell them anything. I knew already. Mm -hmm. What? Because sometimes I see only in pieces. Yeah. So I said, oh, but the church is too small. He yeah. said, don't worry. Yeah. I already knew that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're going to see yeah. the churches feel. Yeah. We're going to see yeah. healing and deliverances yeah. take place yeah. by a spoken word. Yeah. What else are we going to see in this new season? We're going to see it going back to where God is first in family. So we're going to see a coming together of families yeah. and marriages. Yeah. Yes. Yes. About that. <laughs> uh, we're going to, not yes. only that, there are a lot of women that were leading. Yes. Because husbands weren't in the right place. Mm -hmm. In this new mm -hmm. season, he said, I'm going to bring back the family. Yes. I'm going to bring back God first, yes. then family, yes. then our jobs. Yes. Right? So in that. We're going to see the men take their proper yes. places. Yes. When the men take their proper places, you're going to see the family come yes. together. Yes. Yes. So Holy Spirit wanted me to be sure that I told specific things we're going to see in this season yes. because that's going to be critical for the unbeliever. Yes. Yes. Because if we speak it now before it happens, he said, and you tell them specifically what they're going to see uh -huh. in this season, mm -hmm. then they'll go back to it. Mm -hmm. They'll see not our power, but Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Power. So, it, to God be all the glory for everything that is about to take place. Yes. I mean, bringing back together of the families. For leaders, the enemy attacks what's closest to us. Mm -hmm. Why? Because as leaders, we know the order. Yeah. God, yeah. and then family. So the enemy goes after our children, mm -hmm. right? What's mm -hmm. close to us, mm -hmm. you know? But I told my husband, our children aren't exempt from that. I said, I decree and declare. And when they say things to me that I say, this is contrary to what yeah. God said, I said, listen, yeah. I hear what you're saying, yeah. but I don't receive it. Absolutely. I receive what God told me Absolutely. he had for you. Yes. I don't know when you're going to walk into that or when you're going right. to see it, but I know it's done. That's right. And I'll walk away. That's and, right. and when they would say things back to me, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. They just say, oh. Yeah. Okay, mom. That's it. You know, because I know what God said. Yeah. And so when I hear something I don't like, I, I know what God said, and yeah. I decree and declare it for you. You will walk into that. That's right. You will. Amen. So that's Amen. where the enemy attacks leaders, yeah. because we know the proper order. Yeah. But 
he has a master plan. Amen. That the enemy meant for bad for us, God said, watch this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch mm -hmm. this. And that, too, is an area where we have to be careful what we're speaking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. In relation to our children and our families. Yes. So God's got a master plan, and we're only getting the bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. Also, in this new season, you're going to see leaders get away from the tradition of things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we're going to be led by Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. He says, go over yeah. here and do yeah. this. We're going over here yeah. and we're doing yes. this. When yes. we do what God tells us to do, doors open. Mm -hmm. Not only that, people's lives are changed. Have you ever gone somewhere and you thought, I don't want to go, but Holy Spirit says, no, I need you to go yeah. here. And I don't know why I'm there, but I go and then I see mm -hmm. why I'm there. I think we have another statement or question here. Yes. <clears throat> what advice do you have to the members that aren't sure that their leader is walking righteous? Mm, that's good. That's good. I, I know the leaders know if they're not walking righteous, but what if the members are not sure? What advice do you give them to... Uh, give them confirmation or to ensure mm -hmm. where they're at at that yeah. point. Yeah. The members have to be in good standing with God as well. Mm -hmm. So number one, you, you got to be on the path that God's called you to be. So you have to have a personal relationship with God through Holy Spirit. If you're on the right path, if you ask God to show you, he'll show you. Absolutely. It's whether or not you want to believe what God is telling you through Holy Spirit. I'm a firm believer in if I'm on the right path, whether I'm a leader or not, if I'm on the right path, then I ask God to show me. Knock. Ask. He will provide the answer. So for members that feel like, I don't know, I'm asking you to take time and ask and knock. On the door. Yes. Okay, I have one more question. How critical is it for a leader to be not walking righteous and he have sheep following him? How critical is that? Oh, it's very, very, very. It's catastrophic. It is catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because we see it, unfortunately, um, the sheep become what they eat Come on. and the sheep must know to eat the word and not only just eat the word but receive it in its totality because ever so often leaders can teach and preach by their own experiences and or traditions of how they too have been taught but was taught in error. Yes. And or if that one is in sin, then the same sin that they're tasting and drinking and eating of, because it's there, it's, it's now tainting the vessel. Then when I turn and I give it to you, then you're eating and drinking the same thing that I have. That's right. It's no difference from when a mother nurses her child. Yes. The child, and, and we know that as mothers, yes. as we nurse, if we are uh, eating something that was um, um, a leafy vegetable or something, that child could be could develop gas or yes. the colic. They could develop that. It's because they're drinking of the milk of the source. Yes. And so, if I sheep am drinking of the source, and that is tainted, then I'm drinking the same thing. That's why you go into churches and establishments where the whole body will be experiencing divorce. Yes. Or the whole body will be experiencing homosexuality. Yes. Or the whole right. body will be experiencing uh -huh. maybe anger. That's right. The That's whole right. body will be experiencing the same thing that has coming That's out right. or even tried to be hidden in the leader. That's right. And so if you begin to see that in the body, then you begin to question, well, what's in the leader? Yes. Because what's in the head yes. is what's going to be shown out in the body. Amen. Whether you Amen. see it in the Whether leader or not. Or not. Amen. Or yes. not. Now, yes. for, when you know that you know that there is a leader in error, 
And let's say, let's take it as far as it's the pastor. Yes. Now, if it's confirmed in two and three and it's there and it's witness and, there, and don't get over into slander and into um, um, uh, sowing discord. Yes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that you know that you know. Yes. First of all, if there's a prophet in the house, God will speak or give wind to the prophet. Yes. And the prophet can yes. go and speak with the leader. Yes. But if it's the sheep, it does not mean you can't go to the leader and say, hey, listen, um, this is this has come to the attention of me. And this has come to the attention of some others. Yes. And two and three come to hey, listen, can we talk to you about yes. this? And if there's still a denying of this when you know that you know that it's the truth, yes. then let me just warn the people. Yes. You don't stay. You do not stay. Come on. You do not stay. You do not stay. Why yeah. can't they stay? It's corruption. Mm -hmm. yes. it's, it's, it's a door for the enemy. And what you previously said is so. If it's here and now you've identified it and you continue to sit under it, mm -hmm. we're battling not flesh mm -hmm. but principalities oh, at, this, at this level. Yeah. That's really yeah. what it is. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if it's an now, I, I know we said by pastor, but I'm asking you to substitute the words. Okay. Because if you're leading okay. and you're not in good standing with Holy Spirit, corrupt is evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if, if, if the top is corrupt yes. and evil, yes. and you, Holy Spirit, has said, go and address this, mm -hmm. there's something good in you. Or there's a relationship with Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Because if it's all evil, evil doesn't come after evil. Evil, evil <laughs> comes after what's good. And now we've got a problem if you continue to stay. Because if you're not where you need to be spiritually and you're at a place that is no longer feeding you, eventually you succumb to the evil. Come on. And that is why you cannot stay there. Yeah. It is not because who you like. No, if you're on a path that Holy Spirit put you on the path, that's the reason you can't stay. See, because if that gets in your head and your heart, we got a major problem for you who identify the problem. And maybe they said, we're not fixing this issue. If you continue to stay, your light will go out too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reminded of um, Eli. And um, his sons, um, Hafini and um, and Phoenix. I'm reminding of that because it was Eli's son. Eli was the high priest, but his, his sons were handling the offerings yes. um, um, in improper manners, and they were also having sexual relationships with the workers there and the people who would come. I mean, it would just and Eli knew of it. And he only said, oh, you shouldn't do that. Yes. But yet God saw all of this. And the same way that he saw that that was evil and corrupt. And these two, three men did die. The head and the sons, the servants. Um, they all died. But nothing has changed. He's still the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He's still the same God. He took it serious then. Yes. And Eli dropped dead. Yes. He broke his neck. Yes. Mm -hmm. The sons died. That's why prophets, whatever you said at the beginning of this round table, you said there would be some that yes. would drop dead. Yes. God is the same. Yes. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He took it serious then. He still takes it serious yes. now. What are you administering? Yes. How are you treating his sheep? Because his word said, I'll give the sh sh sheep, he will give to the sheep shepherds yes. after his own heart. Yes. But that's not God's heart, and he will remove you. Yes. So, and what does the enemy come that he would do? He wants to kill, steal, and destroy as many Amen. of us that he can. Amen. That's his primary yeah. goal. Yeah. But God says no. So he sends a prophet. Yeah. Or prophets. 
to say, get on the path. Come on. Get, this is where I want you to be. I, I know, is there something yeah. that you want to share? Yeah. How, how important is it? You, you touched on it uh, briefly. Um, the member's responsibility to stay tuned into the Lord. The Lord tells the, his disciples to take heed that no yeah, man amen. deceive you. Yes. So he puts the responsibility yes. on us as individuals yes. that That's he right. can't stand yeah. and sit there and say, Lord, I didn't know. Yes. But he'll say, yes, you did know. Because yes. he tells us to take heed that no yeah. man deceive you. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And we yes. can trick ourselves. And maybe other people, but we can't trick God. Amen. Because he knows. He knows whether we know or not. And he will come to you and say, if you're listening. In this season, God said, I'm going to make my voice to the people that are after my own heart so loud. Because what happens when we go, sin is committed, the voice dwindles and it becomes like a whisper now we're going to see that happen but when you're in good standing he said I'm going to make it so loud yeah. and when they ask for confirmation I'm going to send it so quick mm -hmm. through a word or through a scripture that you sure. read he says I'm going to sure. make it where yeah. you sure. cannot get off of this path oh, yeah. if it's your desire to fall after mm -hmm. me Yeah, he's yeah. going to make it so yeah. now one thing Holy Spirit says to do We've told why it's important not to continue to sit there. But can it be fixed if it happens? It can. Mm -hmm. If the leader repents, mm -hmm. he can change things around. Mm -hmm. Now, in the repentance process for the head, we have to remember that we got to go back and anybody that was affected, there has to be a correction there as well. Mm -hmm. Because if we fed them dirty water, mm -hmm. Even though I've repented, mm -hmm. if I fed someone dirty water and I repent, I've cleaned up my water. What I give out, I got to make sure it overflows to all the people that I affected during the time mm -hmm. I fed the dirty mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just as a leader, there's you're held to a higher yeah, accountability. So anything person that drank the dirty water, we got a responsibility once I come into the light of things. Yeah. To clean yeah. that up. Come on. Because I can't abandon that part of things. Mm -hmm. So we can fix it. Yeah. Holy Spirit has provided a way to fix it. So we're not saying once you're here, you can't get out. Holy Spirit says, no, make it plain that you can fix this. If, if it starts at the head, if the water is now clean and I'm under your yeah. cup. Yeah. Eventually my water is clean, but we got to not forget to clean that up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. God just wants our hearts, yes. um, especially in situations like that, like you said, to be repentant. Yes. And and he loves us. Yes, he does. And whom he loves, he chastises. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But he ultimately wants us to get it right. Amen. Come into him and trust him and let him lead. Do it his way. Yes. That's how we stay out of trouble. Amen. Yes. Amen. When we do it his way. Amen. I so enjoyed this, Amen. and um, I look forward to the next roundtable session. And um, this will be every Sunday, starting at 8 a.m. And you're invited. If you're watching by way of Facebook, I don't care where you are, Massachusetts, Amen. New York, you want to come visit us, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll gladly receive you. Amen. And um, and then after that, we'll fellowship and, and praise and worship service and even hear a wonderful word that I'm sure that God will give to the man of God, our pastor, Apostle Jeffrey Cook. Amen. And um, we'll just have a good time fellowship. And God is doing some awesome, awesome things here in the big city of Sanford, Amen. North Carolina, Amen. and in Life to Life Ministries. And so again, I'm Prophet Angela Cook, and this is a beautiful woman of God, Prophet Crescendo Horton. And we thank you for spending your time with us, and we will prayerfully we'll see you again next Sunday, eight o'clock. Amen. You be blessed.